Hello, everyone. Sorry for the um, uh, late to the party getting started. We were working our way through um, some uh, new technology. Thanks for joining us. Um, I am excited today to have um, Whitney um, Catalano with me today to talk about DIY design and Canva. So um, before um, Whitney uh, introduces herself, I wanna talk a little bit about um, the Share Your Wisdom, Grow Your Business learning series. And this is um, really an opportunity to bring um, our wisdom forward and really a question and answer, not um, focused on um, formal sales pitches or, um, you know, a formal slide deck really about um, us learning from each other. So and around the topic of digital goods and with anything we do online, graphic design just is essential. We have to look good online. And um, Whitney is um, a self-taught designer and I am um, gonna give her a chance to introduce herself, talk a little bit about her background, and then we're gonna dive deep into um, branding, doing it yourself, and how to get really great results out of Canva. So without um, further ado, Whitney, would you like to, to introduce yourself? Hi guys, um, thanks for having me. I'm Whitney Catalano. I am the owner of Trust Your Gut RD. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and trustyourgutrd.com. And I am also a designer, like you said. So I've designed coloring cookbooks and coloring books and um, I've done logo work and various branding things, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the extent of it right now. Awesome. So um, before I dive into the questions that I have prepared for Whitney, I want to, I always like to start these with a personal story of how I got to know um, Whitney, and um, we actually met on the uh, another Facebook group, Dietitians and Virtual Practice, which some of you might be in, and um, right around the same time and Whitney uh, posted her website um, as all of us do as we introduce ourselves on that group and I clicked at her, her on her website and it was gorgeous and I immediately reached out to her and said what Squarespace theme are you using and who did your logo and um, I could was very drawn to kind of the look and feel and the aesthetic of her website and what I've come to know is you know I've interacted with her about um, other things, the cookbook that she designed, um, that she has an incredible skill in graphic design. And it wasn't the theme she was using. It was really the consistency of her brand and her skill in graphic design. And I want to learn as much as I can from her so that I can apply that in my own practice and um, throughout the um, products that I'm that I'm designing. So that's a little background as to um, how I got to know, to know Whitney. Um, wow. Yeah. So without further ado, let's go ahead and um, get started. So really, Whitney, tell us really how you became interested in graphic design. How did this start out for you? Um, well, I have to give a little shout out to my college boyfriend because I told him to watch so they were still friends. And um he is a graphic designer and he i so when i first switched to nutrition in college i started a health blog and was so into it i just went full i just dove head first like this is my path i can't believe i never knew this before and so he would teach me how to do certain things so we would he would show me how to take pictures of food he would show me how to add text and stuff to things and he was showing me all on adobe softwares which was just way over my head Mm. And I learned a little bit, but it definitely piqued my interest. I didn't realize how much goes into your online presence at that time. And then over the years, I got internships uh, with different people like Nikki Sharp. She's, you know, sort of one of those huge health gurus online. And, um, and then and eventually I got an internship with the Meal Makeover Moms while I was, and they're no longer a business, but I, well, I was in college. They live right outside of Boston, or they did live right outside of Boston. 
And um, they still do. They just don't work together anymore. Anyway, um, and so they were looking for a book designer. And I had literally started teaching myself Adobe InDesign three days before I went over to their house to do some work one day. And they were, I was like, oh, I can wing it. Like, I can be a book designer. And if you need someone, you know, I'd be glad to do it. And so then they just started paying me to do that. And so I just figured it out as I went. And that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. Okay, that, um, you know, a lot of us don't get um, a lot of graphic design, real, let's just say a lot, let's get to say we just don't get any right. academic training that the graphic design isn't something that dietitians are taught. We're taught a lot, um, but not necessarily how to look uh, beautiful online. And mm -hmm. um, so I guess you had kind of a unique, um, you know, opportunities. How would you given the path you've taken, how would you recommend that dietitians that are really looking to improve their skills in graphic design, how do they, what tips do you have? I mean, I really started experimenting on my own when I was working for Nikki Sharp because there were a couple different platforms at the time. I think Canva was around, but I don't think it was very, is as advanced as it is now. Mm -hmm. The big one that I remember using was PictoChart. It was like P-I-K-T-O. And it was back when infographics were huge. And, um, sorry, one second, let me turn this off. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I'm in an office right now. <laughs> but PictoChart, and so it was for infographics. And I just went on and I would, play with different templates and things like that. And that is definitely where to start. Go find templates. I also have this folder on my desktop that's all my inspiration. So different companies and RDs and things like that who I think do graphic design really well. And I will just try to recreate what they do and see, you know, you have to constantly be asking yourself, how does that person do that? How does that person make that look so pretty or why does that look pretty and why do I like that? What about it? And then trying to recreate it yourself. That's the only way that I can tell you to get started. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the Adobe softwares, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just have to do a little deep dive at first to understand the language of it. And then once you understand the language, you can watch these tutorial videos and just copy what people are doing. And it starts to make a lot of sense really quickly. There's a learning curve for sure, but I don't know. The the internet's an amazing place. Yeah, I think you're right. The you know the value of tutorials, but um, you know I think I haven't uh, you know started diving any into any of the Adobe programs. I think um, you know we're going to talk a ton about you know Canva and how it's easy to use, but of course anything that's kind of drag and drop has limitations. So you don't have quite the flexibility or the functionality that you have in a, you know the Adobe programs or the other you know design based tools. So I think you know that was a good point that while it may seem a little intimidating at first, just you know dive in and you know over time once you get the hang of it, you can start you know your skills will kind of start growing more quickly if you just you know dive in so before we talk about canva i want to um explore your recent rebranding um and t what really was involved in this from a design perspective so initially i was kind of trying to figure out what i wanted to do i knew i was starting a private practice and i just wanted my name in it I thought and I, I had kind of a vision of what I want and so I wanted to, I went to my friend Taylor Russell and she is has she just has a beautiful style she does a lot of hand-drawn work as well and I just have always loved her style and so I went to her and I said hey can can you make me a logo and we went back and forth on it and she made me something and it was just my name and it was so pretty and it was the perfect place to start. But as I was going along in my business, I started to figure out, like, I think I jumped the gun on that a little bit too early before I figured out what my message was and what sort of I wanted to portray with my brand. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting at Fancy and I was, I mean, interested in gut health. I'm interested in like in instincts and, and that's always been who I am is following your gut and listening to your instincts because I think that people, we get so caught up in diet culture that we don't, like, I have too many people come to me and say, I thought that was right, but everyone told me that was wrong. 
Mm. Well, you're right. Like for you, you're right. So don't listen to other people. And so I was kind of playing with that. And so I pulled a lot of the colors that she used into this new design because I like the font that she used. Um, so I, I took that. So the gut that I have is in the font that she originally used. And then I experimented. I'm not even kidding. I have this folder on my computer that has like 25 different drafts of Trust Your Gut RD. And it has all different color greens, all different color pinks. I went back and forth on it for like two weeks. I sent it to all my friends being like, like this do you like that do you like this and it, everyone had a different opinion which is so frustrating mm. and then finally I found a green that generally people really liked it was a little bit brighter than what I had been going for before and it was something that worked for me mm. a hard part was I was really really sold on having green and pink together mm. I really wanted to have them together in a non-tacky way and that is so hard like I I can't even tell you how long it took me there were so many iterations of it that were just painful to look at yeah as I and, look at your you know trust your gut brand I, I was um looking at the you know the green and pink I hadn't um thought about that before but they're very um complimentary but what I hear you saying is the amount of uh back and forth and I actually think about how I create, I'm a little embarrassed as I listen to the process that you went through to rebrand as I built my website and I was like, well, oh, that looks good. Um, yeah. Really getting a lot of input and feedback and um, realizing that design is kind of an iterative process and that you're probably not going to, you know, the first colors you pick may not be, you know, ideal and that finding you know some people with a good eye for design and making sure to get feedback and really you know try you know that it's going to take quite a bit and it's going to evolve and change so that's really like what you're saying is you know i did it all wrong clearly but i <laughs> am not a graphic designer so these are really valuable pearls that are coming out that you know as i if i approach as i go into thinking you know to improve things down the line that i really should do a more structured especially you know process to to get a good product so um so before you know why is it really important so you know as i look across my social media feeds I, you know, I'm embarrassed. They don't have a lot of consistency in colors or fonts or appearance. Why is it important for dietitians to have kind of this consistency in their brand? Does it really matter? It definitely does matter because if you're, if you think about a big company, right? Like Apple, for example, you can see an Apple commercial and know almost instantly it's Apple, even if you have seen the logo yet even if you haven't seen anything you know almost instantly it's apple it's because they are buying a lifestyle i mean we're buying a lifestyle we're the consumers but we're buying a lifestyle they're selling a lifestyle yeah their products are amazing and beautiful and i'm not going to discount that but we're buying a lifestyle there's a reason like people have such an issue with oh like windows you know like uh, because apple has sold this if you buy our products, you're gonna be, you're buying into this whole essence of who we are. Mm. The same thing goes for smaller brands. So um, one of the, I mean, I guess two of the big names who I can think of right now who have done a really good job of branding is one, Marcy RD. She's a friend of mine in Boston, eating disorder dietitian, and she, um, she just rebranded. And so every time I see something on Instagram that is like a quote or an advertisement for something that she's doing or just like a podcast she's been on, it's always got her branding. And so I always know all right, like this is her stuff without having to see her name below it. I always know. Mm. And that's something that you really come to like and expect when someone has really consistent messaging. You're like, okay, well, this is, I'm excited to be hearing from this person right now. And you want people to know it's you before they read your name. Mm. And that's the big thing mm. because the more that people are thinking about you and the more automatic that response is, the more likely they are to buy into whatever you're doing or to, you know, to jump on board with your lifestyle. Mm. And similarly, people are buying lifestyles now more than ever. That's such a huge aspect of what, of what this culture online has turned into. People are buying the person behind the product mm -hmm. just as much as the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the point of our social media streams, we see so much every day and that instant recognition you know, this is Whitney, um, I'm going to stop and look and that we take advantage of this 
recognizing us before even seeing our name um, and how do we capture that in you know in our instagram posts or you know blogs or whatever we're doing that we have this consistency that's recognizable across not necessarily the same everywhere if what i hear you saying but that it at least has our essence you know you know apple is apple no matter what um because they have that consistency it's really valuable so that's hard um, you know, it sounds yeah. really easy. We can talk about how important this is for an hour plus, but really, it's really hard to, to do it. And I think um, I've been using Canva because I, you know, it's easy, but I'm not getting those kind of results. Um, you know, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't have consistency and I want to. I want to have what you're talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, talk to us about, um, you know, why is Canva popular? Like, how do we what is, you know, what is it? What are the perks? Because for someone who maybe isn't currently using Canva, talk to us about what it is and why it's important. Yeah. So, I mean, Canva is great because I think the biggest reason that Canva is so great is because of its templates. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic that you can look at all these different designs and then edit straight from the design rather than editing from editing from scratch or having to find your own templates or designs to work from. And so I really, that is probably the most valuable part is you don't have to be a skilled designer to make a pretty product. So you just have to find a product that you like or not a product, but like a, you know, a template that you like and then start editing from there. You can change the colors, whatever you want to do. The other thing that's great. And um, I know that you're going to ask me this in a second, but with the business subscription, so, I mean, the biggest thing is if you're not going to buy the business subscription, once you have your three or four colors, you need to have those hex, that hex number written out. It's that six digit and letter number mm. and have those on hand at all times because you got to use the same colors over and over and over again. Mm. That's kind of the biggest thing. Um, with the Canva business, you can save those settings mm. and just you click on them immediately. You don't need the subscription to be able to do that. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. So <laughs> business, this is all about business and you're a busy yeah. girl. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you don't need, you don't need the business subscription to be able to do that as long as you have your colors on hand, but it's nice to just like have them there and then you don't have to always pull up your notes app or whatever it is to use these colors over and over again. Mm. So this is why I like Canva. The other reason I like Canva is that they've got all the sizing done for you. Mm. So you just, they have like Facebook cover photo and, you know, Instagram and things like that. And so you don't have to understand what a pixel is or how many inches a postcard is in order to create something that's beautiful and works for your product. And then you don't have cover photos that are cropping off your picture or, you know, profile pictures that are, you know, awkwardly cropped or anything like that. You can just make it the size that it needs to be and be done with it. Mm. Yeah. Um... I um, have yet to identify a hex code, so that's definitely on my um, takeaway, so that the green is consistent across um, all of my um, branding. And I think it's just a matter of discipline. I think, um, you know, doing that every time, the Canva for Business sounds like it, it makes it easier to be consistent. We're gonna dive into Canva for Business a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more. Um, so what, if you're kind of starting out or you wanna go, you say, okay, 2018, this is the year that I get consistent with my branding and I'm going to have, you know, this is important for me. Mm -hmm. How do you start out? So what are like the two or three things that you should do? You talked about, you talked about colors and you talked about fonts a little bit. What mm -hmm. are kind of a couple of tips for success, like must do so that you end up at the end of 2018 with what you wanted <laughs> more consistency? So I would say definitely you know, first things first, and if we're talking about branding alone, this definitely goes with it is figuring out your message. You mm -hmm. have to figure out what one of my favorite examples that someone said to me once was you would never see a camping equipment company using bright pinks and like neon greens. Like you would never see that because that doesn't make any sense. If you think about camping and or you want like earthy tones. And so all of those outdoorsy brands are gonna have variations on earthy tones. Yeah, they're not all, all gonna be like an earthy green or anything, but they're gonna be variations on that. It's never gonna be this bright thing. So there's a lot of um, 
there's a lot of like infographics and stuff on Pinterest that talk about colors yeah. and how to match the message to your color. Yeah. And I'll have these rainbows of all these different brands. So you can see sort of what these different colors represent for different moods. And there's also a lot of psychology behind that. If you think about, you know, in for all the RDs out there, if you think about uh, with, you know, memory loss, Alzheimer's, dementia patients and using red plates so that they focus on their food. It's mm. kind of like the same sort of thing or how gyms will see a lot of red in gyms because it's meant to sort of rev you up and get you like, raw. Mm. whereas blues are much more relaxing and greens are very earthy and wellness. And we know these sort of basic basic things. So there's a lot of green in the nutritional world. So figuring out what your message is and then matching your colors to that message. I think the next step is going to be your fonts for sure. You can definitely play around with fonts, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when the font isn't readable. I bought this amazing book and I'm not going to say what it is, but I bought this amazing book from this uh, dietitian, I think who was just the content of the book was so great, but the titles were unreadable for all the different, you know, the recipes and stuff like that. And I was just so sad because I knew what font it was. I've seen that font. It's a Google font that you can like find in Canva. And some of those fonts are just not readable and they're not going to be useful to your audience. Mm. And then I think the last step is definitely going to be understanding who your audience is. So if you work with mostly men, for example, yes, as gendered and binary as this is, you're probably not going to use a bright pink. That's mm. it, it's, it sucks to think about it like that because you know, the millennial in me is like, no, you don't conform to gender standards, but you know, if, you're, yeah. if your audience is men ages 40 to 60, you're not going to use like really, really bright sort of classically girly colors, if you right. will. So and so, yeah, it's just understanding what that is and understanding to how you want your messaging to be formatted. Are you going to be the type of Instagram or Facebook person to put text on pictures? Are you going to skip that all together and just use your own pictures? Yeah. Are you going to? You know, it's, it's understanding what you need and what is also within your wheelhouse. So right. don't try to jump into it and say, okay, I'm going to be that person who has this beautiful online presence and with all of these different, you know, photos of food that I'm going to take if you've never taken a really nice food picture before. <laughs> so okay. Mine starting off well. realistic. Okay. Okay. I think that's... Um really valuable about kind of talking about who your audience is, what's your brand. I think part of the reason that, you know, even I myself, my site from my private practice and what I'm presenting there isn't maybe as cohesive is that as I went into that process, I wasn't as sure of who is my audience? What am I trying to convey? And actually, I know I read a book um, before I started my practice that really said you're going to change and evolve so much in the first year that really just get something up there. Learn about yourself, learn about your brand, and then change it. And so I hear so much about all this time and effort, you know, put into graphic design before launch. And then there's this immediate, oh, what I thought and what the reality of who my audience is, you kind of evolve and then, you know, you end up kind of going through a rebranding process. So I kind of feel that a lot for myself. And I'm really glad I took that advice in the book that I read that said, you know, spend one day on your website and get it up um, and then just get started. And, and, and you're going to learn about yourself and your, your practice as you go forward. And maybe that approach isn't for everyone, but um, it really helps you prevent like too much of an investment at the beginning you know, you're brand new and you're probably going to learn a lot about yourself in the process, but I'm sure other people have been very successful with a different approach, but that's um, kind of what no, I have absolutely. seen. You got to just get started at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dig into Canva just a little bit more. And the really important question about paid Canva. So Canva for business, I do not have Canva for business yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all those expenses that we have every month and there's so much technology applications out there and it's trying to figure mm -hmm. out which ones are, you know, really valuable um, and mm -hmm. are they a good place to spend our money? So I think from someone who uses Canva for business, is very <laughs> proficient in it, what are the really high value things that Canva for business does and why is it, I mean, why is it a good investment for dietitians? Yeah. Um, okay. So I think my 
favorite, I have two favorite features, which is you can do all your business settings. So your colors, your fonts, if you buy a font online or like license a font online, which is one of the things that I did, you can upload your own font. So you're not restricted to the fonts in Canva and then your logo. So that's all in your business settings. And then you have your logo just right there and you can click on it and it just imports. And so you want really your branding on everything. And so mm-hmm. you having your logo on hand. Yeah. You can put it in your uploads mm-hmm. normally, but it's just easy. It's like, it, they just make it really easy and clean. The second thing that I like about it is the resize feature. Mm. It is amazing. I, to be able to, let's say, so for example, I work part-time at a doctor's office here in Pasadena and I created a brochure for the office. We don't use camper for business here. We just have the unpaid version. So if I wanted to turn that brochure into a postcard, I would have to do the whole thing over again mm-hmm. in this new size. And that is so frustrating. That is like you are adding on so much time to your whole process when with Canva for Business, when I want to create, um, for example, so the I know we'll talk about this later, but the course I'm creating for RD to RD. I have my thumbnails that are in one size for each lesson. And then I have Instagram versions of that that are squared off. And all I did was click resize and then you just have to play with it and make sure it fits appropriately. It tries to guess. It doesn't really work that well, but it does transfer everything over. So you've got all the same elements, all the same sizing, the same sort of um, ratio to Mm. the the canvas. I see. Cause you know, you can't even get like a quick demo. It's like this little magical crown that you think, Oh, I really, you know, they entice you with it right there on the screen, but I've never been able to use it. And what you're telling me, I can't, when you have to start over and you want to go from a postcard to like a square and then the size of your, your logo is wrong and you spend an incredible amount of time resizing when you want to put it on different social media platforms. So it sounds like that makes it incredibly efficient and just, you know, every, if you want to be consistent, getting rid of as many barriers to that as possible, um, that if you make something hard for yourself, you're probably, you know, not going to do it. We know that about food choices. You know, if you don't have any healthy snacks, you're not going to eat healthy snacks. <laughs> they're going to be available to you. Um, so that's actually a really good point, that resize feature that continues to come up consistently as like one of the most beneficial, well, there's, you mentioned fonts and colors. I think it's hard to say what's the most beneficial, but that resize feature has been something I've been wanting to know more about for a really long time. So thank you for awesome. explaining yeah. that, the kind of the nitty gritty of that, because mm-hmm. having not been able to see it myself. Um, so yeah, anything else about the paid version of Canva that you find useful that didn't let you talk about? Um, I mean, it depends. So I, uh, I have stock photos that I get through my Adobe subscription. Mm. And so I don't really use a lot of canvas stock photos, but with the paid, it's the paid version, you get a lot more options for mm. stock photos that you don't have to pay for, which is really nice. Like everything with that little crown you're able to use mm. and their options are super limited in the free mm. version in terms of finding photos to use. You have to go find them online. Yeah. And, If you're starting out, if this is something where, you know, you're not as familiar with how to find stock photos or what even a stock photo is or what the licensing laws are behind all of this stuff, then Canva's a really good option. They have a lot of, Mm. they just have a lot. They have, and it's very easy to navigate, very easy to search. And so that's, that would be definitely something I would recommend for someone who I think it's worth the investment. And then also the Canva business subscription. I'm pretty sure it's one of those things where they're like, Oh, this is the monthly fee and it's a discount if you pay up front. Mm. And I really like that because it's like, get, you know, take my money and then let's be done with it for 12 months. So for me, it's just kind of, it's not that bad. Like it's not that expensive in the scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And to have all of that accessibility to those stock photos is huge. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. And I want to go back to your point about fonts. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that there's really limited fonts in Canva. And so many people use Canva that you pretty much can look at an image and know, oh, that's the mm -hmm. font I always use. So if you're really looking to have this identity with your brand, if you're using the unpaid version of Canva, like your font looks like everybody else's font because mm -hmm. everybody else is using those same free fonts in Canva. So being able to, you know, purchase your, you know, a font and upload it and have it available for all of your um, graphics. I really hadn't thought about the value of that and the importance of it through having this conversation with you. I'm um, yeah. starting to understand that a little bit more. So that's actually really helpful. Um, I know one other feature that was brought up in, um, in the group was, um, folders that you can use folders mm -hmm. in the paid version or there's more folders because mm -hmm. i think the unpaid is just like two folders how does that what is that yeah mean? um i mean i don't really use the folders a ton but that's because i have i actually just started using it recently because i have so many things for this course now um because they still stay all on your main page. But what's nice is you can be like, okay, well, here's everything that I've ever made for social media. And then here's everything I made for this particular course. And here's everything, all my print materials and kind of drag them into these folders. And so then if you're looking for something, because everything kind of starts to look the same as mm -hmm. you might expect if you've got the consistency across your platforms, everything on your front page of all your designs are going to kind of look the same. And you're like, which one was I working on or what was that? So it is nice to have, you know, all of that separated and especially with RDs, like we're so, you know, put everything in little boxes and very much like you need everything in its place, like above all else, if that's a, that's probably the number one descriptor of RDs is like, we need everything in its place. And so I, I think that part, I can see why that part is really, really comforting to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. having those folders and being like, all right, I know where everything is it's all organized. Yeah. Well, I think but it's an option where if you're the person that, you know, you've got like everything on my desktop or in a folder, just hodgepodge that you can do that with Canva. Or if you've got, you know, 13 subfolders and highly organized or, you know, that you can also do that. So, you know, whatever your bench is, you're going to find it um, as far as organization. So, wow, that was actually, um, I learned a lot about the paid version of Canva. Um, so while DIY is, um, I think DIY with, you know, a little bit of some, you know, hand holding, and I know you are putting together a um, course on mm -hmm. how to use Canva and graphic design, not just, I think the challenge with the tutorials that you look online, they may not really be focused on, you know, a dietitian in our nutrition practice or have that kind of, you know, branding element, you know, you're trying to piece that all together from a number of different sources to really get good results. So tell us about the course that you're working on and um, what would be kind of tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I'm really excited about this course. I'm basically, you know, it's kind of all using a screen capture platform to teach how to use Canva for everything that you could possibly need and social media, print marketing, all this stuff, business cards, Instagrams, things like that. And um, I'm going to talk a lot about branding as well. So for people who are kind of lost with what is a hex color, you know, or, or a hex number, what is, uh, what does it mean to license a font or you know, whatever it is, I'm going to talk about all that stuff, which is really nice because, you know, we don't, we don't get those training at all. And it's really a shame that we don't get any sort of marketing training other outside of our food service management, which even that's not really even marketing training. It's just like, you need to market. We're just like, okay. Um, so, so this is, this is a unique opportunity for me. And, um, one of the things that I'm really excited about is I've been posting in the different RD groups that I'm in to get examples of branding from other RDs so I can kind of, you know, share the spotlight with whoever else is already doing this work and sort of not being recognized for it. Mm. And some of the emails that I've gotten from various RDs, which you guys will have to wait for the course to find out who they are, but just some of these emails and flyers and 
you know, social media things and just the brand consistency that I've seen from RDs sending me stuff has been totally amazing. Like this is such a learning experience for me because I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. Like I want to try to create that. And so mm-hmm. what I'm going to do is literally take some of these things and say, okay, like this is how I would recreate it with my own spin. And this is how you can do it is, you know, everything on the internet is sort of an iteration of something else. Mm. And so it's learning how to see something and not say, oh, wow, they probably paid a lot of money for that. It's to see something and say, I can do that. I can make that. Um, I know how they made it. Or if I don't know how they made it, I can easily find out or really struggle through it until eventually I figure it out. You know what I mean? Like changing, changing your mindset in that regard of, I know the basic understanding of how Canva works and I know what elements might've gone into this. And so let's see what I can come up with. Mm. I love that you're using um, inspiration and teaching the work of other dietitians. I think finding something that, you know, inspires you, you keep a folder on your desktop. Um, you know, I have like a Pinterest page, but just putting it front and center as I'm learning about Canva, as I'm like learning from you in, you know, in the course that I can really see people in our profession and examples of what looks good that would, you know, I think definitely speed up the process. So thanks for telling us about your course. And I'm sure, you know, we will um, be getting out, you know, more, more information and yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming on the share your wisdom, grow your business, um, monthly learning series. And we are looking forward to, um, to, uh, seeing your course. And I know you have a free, uh, checklist that you're giving out mm-hmm. social media must have graphics checklist. So I'll definitely put a link. If you haven't already grabbed a copy of that, Whitney has digested, um, kind of must haves. <laughs> what are the images? What are the things you need? tips for creating all of those. So if you don't have that, you should definitely pick up a copy because a lot of um, thought went into to creating that. So any closing words, Whitney, before we uh, sign off? Yeah, just to keep up with me, if any RDs have any questions or anything, I am around. Um, yeah, the checklist, anyone who downloads the checklist, you'll find out when the course is available. It'll be mid-January, so I'm really excited about that. And then I also sent you a link. And so I, I think um, you're going to link to it along with the, mm-hmm. the checklist of the coloring book that I created. It's color and eat the alphabet. And so I, that was the most recent thing that I did with the dietitian was create this coloring book. And, um, I'm really excited. I've been kind of playing with the idea. And so I'm curious of people leaving in the comments, if this is something that you guys would be interested in, um, doing a course after this one about how to self publish a book. Mm. I was could be something that would be really helpful so because all of the coloring books that I've done with dietitians we self-publish and that is a whole learning process too <laughs> so so let me know and yeah, yeah that would be this. sounds like um you have a, a lot of knowledge and I look forward to uh learning more from you and uh the various groups that we are in together so thanks again for spending so much time and diving deep into Canva and giving us so much wisdom about branding and graphic design. For me, it was extremely valuable. So um, thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.